Okay, hey, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. We're right here in Buck Zumas record, recording studio. We got a little recording studio right here. We just put it together here in the last six months or so. I had some people come over to my home here, and we had to remodel the basement a little bit and uh, uh, put some uh, recording uh, equipment up here. And you can see that uh, this here was back, uh, boy, oh boy, in 1984, when Buck Rock and Roll Zumoff had that feud going with Pepe Le Pew. And this is how it all started where Rock and Roll Buck Zuma brings that big skunk to the match. And I'm telling you, this is more than exciting because, as you're going to see a little later on, Kenny J will beat Jacques Goulet. And this is probably one of the only few times ever in the history of All-Star Wrestling that Kenny J actually wins or beats somebody. There you can see Al Derusher. Al Derusher's coming out into the ring area where Buck Sumoff is standing and telling him that he better get out of there or they're going to fine him. Well, Buck Sumoff at that time doesn't care about a fine or doesn't really care about anything at all. All he wants to do is get revenge with Jacques Goulet. As you can see, there goes Wally Carbo. Kenny J and Jacques Goulet. Now, this is just a regular television wrestling match. There's nothing really special about it. Just the idea that Buck Sumoff's in there uh, kind of clowning around and giving Jacques Goulet, oh, a body slam. A uh, hard time, and you can see that Jacule is a little upset just by the way he's wrestling. He's not, well, now he's settled down finally into an arm bar. But before that, you could see he was actually kind of punishing Kenny J, taking it out on Kenny J that Buck Rock and Roll Zoom off is in the ring, or was by the ring. Looks like pretty old, old school wrestling. There you go, working that arm. Oop, a little open slap, a little Ric Flair. There you go, a little elbow smash. My, oh, my, there's old Marty Miller. Holy cows, I'm telling you. There you go. There's a snap mare. And uh, Jacule, he's on top of things there. Whoops, there's Rock and Roll Buck Zoom up with that skunk. Now, let me tell you, I went to Toys R Us to pick that skunk up. Then I told him that day when I wanted that skunk made, I said, I want that skunk to be about the size of a four-year-old. And they laughed. They thought it was the craziest thing they've ever seen. But nevertheless, they did uh, make that big skunk for me. And... And seeing that uh, Sergeant Jacques Goulet was doing the thing, being from the Foreign Legion and all of that, that Pepe Le Pew business was just a natural thing. And it really, really enhanced, well, of course it enhanced my career. Uh, you know, we've come a long ways now. This is about three, two, three years later after the weasel suit business. And uh, my popularity flew right through the roof, of course, because when uh, Bobby Heenan busted my radio, holy cows, the day the music died, I'm telling you, that was a big deal. Now, this is about two years later, and uh, this deal with Pepe Le Pew was a heck of a thing. We uh, wrestled all over the, the, the AWA territory, and boy, everywhere we went, P-U, P-U. And not only that, but, you know, I used to take that silly skunk along with me in the airport, and I'd actually seat belt it into a seat in the airplane. And there was tons and tons of wrestling fans that, you know, knew what was going on. I used to take that silly skunk, and I'd actually tie it to the back of my motorcycle when I'd go down the road to some of the shows I had to wrestle at. So that skunk was really a big, a big deal for me for about two years. We ran it all over the place. Back to the show. There it was a beautiful suplex by Jacule. You know you can't take that away from Jacule. He was a he was a great uh, amateur wrestler, and of course he was a great and uh, great professional wrestler and well seasoned. Uh, he's not a he's not a kid. He, he's a, a expert professional. Wrestled all over the country, all over the world. So when I had this opportunity to tangle it up with Jacule with this silly skunk and all of that, well that was really really a big deal for me. I was real excited about that. And, uh, and obviously, uh, you know, I made quite a bit of money because I was the main event, semi-final. We'd wrestle all over the place, Buck Rock and Roll Zoom off, uh, wrestling Jacques Goulet in a, in a semi-final situation. Or later on, I even wrestled Jacques Goulet and Pepe Le Pew with, with uh, either the Crusher or the Mad Dog or the Claw Master. Any of them would be my tag team partner. So it was a real enhancement for the Rock and Roll Buck Sumoff at that time. Now you can see here he's putting on that, that claw. His now there's Rock and Roll Buck Sumoff. Now this is what it's all about. I took the I took it away from Sergeant Jacques Goulet uh, that the, the quit paying attention to Kenny J. Well then when Kenny J rolled him up, boy oh boy, you can see the people jumping out of their chairs in the back. Kenny J not only wins a match, but he won the first match probably ever, maybe the only match he's ever won on television ever. And you can see that Jacques Goulet is uh, really upset about this whole thing. 
Kenny J doesn't get it. While I, why I threw that skunk in the ring is beyond me. It was just a crazy notion, a crazy idea. Ken, uh, Jacques Goulet kicks the skunk, drags me back into the ring. Kenny J is now out of the ring. The referee can't get any law and order. The skunk is still in the ring. Now watch this. Bing! I'm telling you, I never raised my hand. I never protected myself at all. I took that post hard. I'm not kidding you hard. I had a bump of my egg as big as a, go- uh, as big as a goose egg for three, four days. We had to ice it down. And uh, it was a big bump. It was a big show. It was a big deal. And it sure enhanced the, my my uh, my situation being rock and roll buck zoom off. I'll tell you, I had tons and tons of letters and tons and tons of cards of people that saw that. And they were concerned that buck rock and roll zoom off got one on the noggin. And uh, like I said before, this was boy, oh boy, 1984, 1983, long time ago. But it's still people to this day when we wrestle in towns and bars and BFWs all across. Minnesota, excuse me, all across Minnesota, they still talk about the day the radio died, and they still talk about Pepe Le Pew. And I'm telling you that this little wrestling episode here on television only was about seven, seven, eight minutes long. But even that seven minutes, people still talk about it today. Like I said before, people come to the wrestling shows, rock and roll wrestling. If you want to see this kind of stuff, you know, we still do. We have a weasel suit. We still do the weasel suit match. I guess we've never done a Pepe Le Pew match, but I suppose we could. There's the skunk. That's where it ended up. We hope you enjoy this, and that's what it was. It was all-star wrestling. You keep an eye on rock and roll wrestling. we got lots more of this stuff coming up in the future. Thank you very much.